Welcome to Portsmouth, Ohio, about a five hour car drive south of Detroit. Beyond that bridge that way, you find yourself in Kentucky and a tee shot that way, you're in West Virginia. But it was here about a hundred years ago where the Detroit Lions began as the Portsmouth Spartans. And if you can believe it, the stadium where they played is still here. You don't have to be a Lions fan to be a little awestruck as you walk into Spartan Municipal Stadium. This is where it all started for me. Gerald Cadigan is the athletics director at Shawnee State University in Portsmouth, which just acquired the stadium. All the visitors that did not want to pay to come in would watch the game right from the levee. <laughs> if he looks like he could play a little football himself, that's because he did. Starting on this field in high school, then at Penn State, and in the NFL for a short time. The university plans to revitalize this stadium, a new field, a new track, new opportunities. Today's kids, do you, do you think they get the sense of history the way you do, that it, this field goes all the way back to the 1930s? It's like nearly 100 years of history. I think that's part of my responsibility and why I'm still here in this community to kind of share that, to show them the old VHS videos of, <laughs> of uh, football games and, and the history that has been here, and then to create new memories. It's also not unusual for visitors to show up at this stadium, which is an historical site. It's been on my to-do list for about six months now. But what are the odds that on this day, a Lions fan from West Virginia would happen by. No, I saw um, the original Lion King, Barry Sanders, Sanders, when I was seven years old watching Monday Night Football on a black and white screen in my bedroom. And I fell in love with Barry Sanders, led me to the Detroit Lions. And many years later, come on in. It led Justin Mooney here wow. to the team's ahead. original home. I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know if you can see that. Look at the history. You can just feel it in the reverb, the reverb, <laughs> the reverb off the walls. The walls are so unique. It feels unique. You know, you can see that the uh, the history. You can just feel it permeating through the walls. We well, don't have to go far in Portsmouth to find just memorabilia and signs of the history of the game here in the stadium, an aptly named local bar. You've got one of the early helmets signed by Glenn Presnell back in 2002. So you've got this and you have all this memorabilia up on the wall talking about back in 1935 when the Lions won the NFL championship, former Portsmouth Spartans were on that team. And of course, you just look around some of the biggest games in, in league history back in pro football's early days, like the Ironman game when the Portsmouth Spartans beat the Packers 19-0 right here in Portsmouth. And some of these guys that, like Dutch Clark, went on to become Lions, played on that team. This is from December uh, 1932. This is December 2nd. So this is two days before one of the biggest games in really the history of the NFL. It's called the Iron Man game. Dr. Drew Fight teaches history at Shawnee State. By the way, it's called the Iron Man game because the Spartans only had 11 players. The same guys played offense, defense the whole game. Wow. And they beat the world champions. He also oversees some of the football artifacts from that time. And we have a copy of the uh, stock uh, certificates for the Portsmouth National League Football Corporation. So, so people could buy stock in the team. That's right. So <laughs> a lot of local locals owned uh, stock in the Spartans. We see a lot of lion sweatshirts um, come football season. Portsmouth Mayor Charlotte Gordon is literally walking us down memory lane. Along the flood wall, keeping the Ohio River out, is a mural depicting the city's history, scene by scene. And of course, the football team checks in right around the 1930 mark. It is part of the fabric, part of the community memory of, of this town, um, that, that it was such an important part of our history that has been carried forth. And it's fun, even kids talk about it. For many, it's both the past and the present that combine to create an added layer of excitement for the Detroit Lions of today. It's just awesome even to be back here to say, wow, like, you know, an NFL team started here and uh, now it's uh, continuing to thrive for this community and be a place of, of championship and memories for the future. 
I feel like when you've went through the strife that Detroit Lions fans have, when you have the ups that we have now, mm -hmm. it makes it so much more incredible and to be a part of this. So that's yeah. why I tell everybody I'm bald. Like I lost my hair because I'm a Lions fan. So <laughs> we've been through it. Championships were the norm in the early days of the Lions franchise. And we know the current team and the current fans who are all over the country are hoping that it's just about time for history to repeat itself. In Portsmouth, Ohio, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4.